Intel, I have a question for you. When I purchased my i7-4790K, I received a stock heatsink that included a copper slug, which was quite nice to see, especially considering the fact that copper is much more expensive per pound than aluminum is here in the States. But I, I looked a little further into this matter because I didn't recall seeing copper slugs in some of the other stock heat sinks that I'd seen from Intel-based CPUs. Uh, so when I did my research, it was literally just as simple as opening one of the multiple boxes of old processors that I have back there. I found that most of your Skylake processors don't include copper slugs. What's going on there? Now this was a bit confusing at first because even my i5-4460 from the Haswell lineup included a heatsink with a copper slug. So these copper slugs aren't just biased towards unlocked K CPUs, even my locked 4460 included one. But every Skylake processor that I have purchased comes with one of these cheaper all aluminum heatsinks. That's a little strange. I know that Skylake TDPs are a bit lower than Haswell's, but I mean, did that really mean having to cut back altogether on the uh, the quality of stock heat sinks? So that's the question I want answered in this video. If you are on a very strict budget and have to use a stock CPU cooler, should you opt for a CPU that includes one of these with a nice copper slug in the middle, or just settle for the cheaper, flimsier, all aluminum one? Let's find out. So here's what went down here in the studio. After reassembling each stock heatsink with its respective fan, even though both fans were nearly identical, I mounted each atop my 6600K, which I had downclocked to 4 GHz at 1.25 volts, to use as a baseline. As we're assuming a very strict budget, the pre-applied thermal paste on both units were utilized. Once each cooling device was secured and wired in, I fired up the machine and ran through a series of tests involving IDA64, Adobe Premiere, GTA 5, Black Ops 3, and Minecraft, just, you know, for kicks. I used MSI Afterburner for the most part to record the peak temperature of the CPU as it underwent each test, and recorded the results in an Excel spreadsheet. I then repeated the exact same test after installing the second stock cooler, the Soli aluminum one, and yes, that meant taking the entire tower back to the workbench, removing the old thermal paste, reinserting, and rewiring the new cooler. Finally. now. These results are actually rather interesting. Let's see how things went down. I have to confess something up front here. When I handled both of these CPU coolers, I noticed that the Skylake cooler was much lighter than the Haswell cooler. And you're thinking, well, Greg, duh, I mean, copper weighs more than aluminum, so that makes sense. The one with the copper slug would weigh more if they're both the same everywhere else. But I also noticed that the Skylake uh, aluminum fins were thinner than the ones on uh, Haswell's Haswell's cooler. And that's that's a little concerning to me. It seems like they're cheaping out all around on their new coolers. Now obviously the 6600K and the 6700K do not come with coolers. This Intel encourages you to use custom cooling in order to achieve fairly high overclocks with those overclockable CPUs. But when it comes to their non-K CPUs, like the 6400 that I have here, you're gonna, you're gonna have a pretty cheap cooler. Uh, actually cheaper than the Haswell-based coolers, the Haswell equivalents. Uh, I received a cooler with a copper slug here in the 4460, even though this one is not overclockable. So um, for some reason, Intel is just cheaping out big time. I know why, they're saving money. So this is a bit disappointing because Intel assumes that you're going to be using the stock coolers for both of these CPUs. In fact, I wouldn't even recommend using a custom cooler on either of these because neither of them are going to get very hot, even under full load. Uh, so with that in mind, it is a bit disappointing to see that the newer platform is using a much cheaper cooler uh, that will yield higher temperatures as you've just seen uh, in the tests that I ran in this video. So uh, with that in mind, 
Skylake's still worth it. Now I know it seems like I've been bashing Skylake a lot lately, you know, the, the improvements from Haswell aren't substantial. Uh, but in the case of the 6400 versus the 4460 in particular, both of which include Intel coolers, is it worth purchasing a newer CPU if you're going to, uh, if you're going to have, uh, I guess, a cheaper cooler is what I'm trying to ask here. Because if you're going to purchase both of these coolers, I'm assuming you're on a budget anyway, and you're probably not going to want to spend more than 20 or $30 on a custom CPU cooler, so you'd probably just settle for the stock coolers. It's just a bit disappointing to me to see that uh, the, the new Skylake lineup is using cheaper coolers from Intel. And I don't know if many people have even pointed this out. I haven't seen much in regards to the cooler change. They look exactly the same from the top with the fans on, but underneath is a completely different story. So with the extra uh, temperature savings involved with Haswell CPUs, should you forego the 6400 and take advantage of the 4460? Go ahead and check out this video here where I compare the i5-4460 to the i5-6400. I also take into account the fact that one uses DDR3 and the other uses DDR4. Uh, and there still isn't much of a difference at all in any task. The i5-6400 does improve a bit uh, on video rendering and things of that sort. But for gaming, they're, they're pretty much going to be equal uh, for the most part when it comes to gaming. So if you are a gamer and you're considering either of these CPUs and you want to have a cooler system, I personally would recommend the 4460, even though you're not going to have the newest and greatest, it's going to play games just fine and it will keep your entire computer a bit cooler. At least that's what I was able to conclude from the tests that I was able to run in the studio. But uh, I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments if this is a big deal or not. Uh, obviously, if you're using a custom cooler, this probably doesn't even apply to you at all. So thank you for watching this far into the video. But if you are using a stock cooler, I want to hear from you especially. Let me know if knowing the fact that Haswell CPU coolers do have copper slugs would have been a game changer for you. Would you have considered Haswell a bit more than you had up front if you were choosing between something like the i5-6400 and the i5-4460? If you liked the video and you like what we did and the content that you saw, be sure to give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, for whatever reason, give us a thumbs down and let me know in the comments below why you gave us a thumbs down. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already because we do cool tests and things like this pretty much all the time. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.